One really nice thing about script files is that they stay around until you decide to delete them. This means that you can use a script file or a piece of code from a script file later. However, if you look at a piece of code that you wrote years ago, it's a pretty good bet that you won't remember what you were doing then or why. Therefore, it's really helpful to have some documentation in your code which helps remind you what the code is for. Comments can do this for you very easily. They are just lines of text in your code which are ignored by MATLAB when the code is executed. Their only purpose is to explain what's going on in the code. Comments also help you pass information along to your coworkers and other people who may use your code. If other people are going to use your code, you need to define variables, explain the mathematical operations in the context of the problem you're doing, and probably claim authorship of the code and document when the code was written. Now let's talk about MATLAB syntax to create comments. A percent sign is used to create a comment. Simply precede your comment with a percent sign and terminate it with an enter keystroke. All the text from the percent sign and the enter key will become a comment and will be ignored by MATLAB. As a visual cue, MATLAB's editor and the command window will color code comments green so that your comments will be easy to identify in the code. Because this green text won't be executed by MATLAB, it's often called non-executable code. Now, before I start using comments in script files, where they're actually useful, I'll demonstrate this syntax by typing non-executable code in the command window. First, I'll make sure that there aren't any variables already in the workspace by typing who. Now I'll create a line which consists only of a comment by typing a percent sign. This line doesn't do anything. No variables were created by this line, which I can verify by typing who again. I can mix a comment with an executable command if I want to. For example, I'll assign the value of 4 to a variable named y by typing y equals 4. Then I'll add a comment to this same line by following this with percent set y to 4. Everything between the percent sign and the enter key is ignored, so when I press enter, I end up with the variable y being created and nothing else is done. There are a few different approaches for commenting code. Comments often have to follow strict coding standards. For this course, I'll just give a quick overview of a couple of common approaches and provide a few guidelines you should follow when commenting your code. One useful technique is called line-by-line -line commenting. This involves writing a comment that describes a specific line of code. Make sure your comments are meaningful. Here's an example of a bad single-line comment. All this comment does is restate what the code already says. Comments are intended to describe the intent of the code in terms that would make sense to a relatively knowledgeable user. This comment might be better. The line's actually calculating something called a gain bandwidth product, which, if you're an electrical engineer, is probably a meaningful term. A second common commenting approach is to use what are called block comments. Block comments usually consist of several lines of comments that describe the overall operation or intent of a section of code. This, for example, might be a set of block comments that appear at the beginning of a script file. They describe the overall purpose of the code, say who wrote it and when, and give a hint as to what a user of the code may need to do in order to run the code. My recommendation is simply to make sure that your comments adequately describe your code's operation for someone who's relatively knowledgeable about the problem you're working on and MATLAB syntax in general. There is an alternate syntax in MATLAB for block comments. If you precede a section of code with a percent and an open curly bracket and follow the section with a percent sign and then close the curly bracket, all the code between those symbols will be denoted as a comment, even if multiple lines are contained between them. Notice that the comment does not end when an enter key is pressed. It's ended by the percent and the closure of the curly bracket. Now I'll do another example of creating a script file, this time including comments. In this example, I'm going to determine the deflection of a uniformly loaded cantilever beam.
The left side of the beam is fixed, the right side's free, and there's a distributed weight of W pounds per inch along the beam. The equation that describes the vertical deflection Y as a function of the distance from the fixed end of the beam, X, is shown here. This equation is, of course, a function of position along the beam, X, and is also a function of the Young's modulus, E, and the moment of inertia, I, of the beam. For the problem that I'm doing, these are the numerical values for the variables in this equation. First, I'll create a folder to put my script file in. As usual, I'll work in the Tim directory on the C drive, so I'll change that to my current directory by typing cd space c colon backslash tim. Or if you prefer, you can use the graphical user interfaces. Now I'll create a folder named MATLAB demos in the tim folder by typing mkdir space MATLAB demos. I'll make that my current folder by typing cd space MATLAB demos. Finally, I'll create a directory named chapter 4 and make that my current folder. I can check my current working folder by typing pwd for print working directory and pressing enter. The path to the working folder is also displayed in this text bar if you prefer to check it there. I'll create a new script file in my working folder by typing edit b-e-a-m-d-e-f-l. Now I'm finally ready to start typing commands in my script file. I'll start out with a block of comments describing the problem I'm doing, who's the author, and the date that the file is being created. Personally, I prefer to define all of my variables within the script file so that I have a record of what the problem is that I'm actually doing. I could define these variables in the workspace from the command window, but putting them in the script file helps me make sure later that I didn't make a typo when I was entering any values. So I'll start out with a quick comment that shows what this block of stuff is. It's setting the necessary constants. And then I'll set values for E, I, L, W, and X along with the units that the user should use in case I forget about that later on. Finally, I'll put in the equation I'll use to calculate the deflection along with a quick comment about what that's about. Now I'll save the file and run the file by typing the file name at the command prompt. The calculated displacement is displayed. Notice that when the script file runs, it'll overwrite any variables in the command window with names the same as those used in the file, exactly as if the commands in the script file were typed in the command window. For example, I'll set x equals 234 in the command window. If I run the script file now, I get the same answer as before since the value of x is reset to 10 within the file. However, if I remove the assignment of the x variable in the script file by commenting out that line and resaving the file, and then setting x equals 5 in the command window, the script file will still use the value of x which is already defined at the command window. These last couple of demonstrations emphasize that the base workspace is used directly by the script file. Any variables created in the file are placed in the workspace and any variables in the workspace are available for the script file to use. In summary, it's important to use comments in script files. Use comments and use them copiously. They can save you and your coworkers a lot of time later on.